We're going to try it tonight. Is it so far, so drops. good, B. <laughs> so far, so good. Yeah. Just be ready, Sean. Okay. Nora, did you get my email? Yeah. Okay. Did you get mine? Yeah. Dang, it's coming. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's why I thought you'd love to get it. Hi, Paulette. So cosmic, Matt. So many choices, Matt. <laughs> I have maybe spent a little bit of time with backgrounds. I see. I just hope to stay on. I hope so too. Can you find me a background that'll cut my hair? I've got a pair of clippers. I just need <laughs> 10 minutes. Can't you get into a beauty shop yet? Friday. Let's see. 47 out now. For you. Not to be picky, but Aspirations Day Spa here in town does haircuts and they're taking appointments. I have an appointment in 95 hours. <laughs> Are you actually counting, Paulette? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I can't wait. B, I have received no um, comments regarding the public hearing. Okay. When the time comes. I'm not near a clock, so somebody's gonna have to let me know. Four fifty-eight. Will you be back from the beach by then, Mike? Uh, I'm back now. <laughs> <laughs> Just dreaming. Hi, Sarah. Hi, guys. Hi, Karina. Hello. Will you turn on your video? Thanks. It's more better as the kids would say. Is Bob the only one we need?
It's five o'clock. We want to give Bob a minute and see if he logs on. Is Jan planning on being here? Oh, I forgot. I thought I counted seven. Hmm. Wonder who I besides. I haven't heard anything of you, Theron. I have not. Well, maybe we'll go ahead and get started and as long as it's five o'clock and hope that they join us soon. So I called this virtual board meeting to order. It's the time um, in many different places on May 18th. Welcome to all of you who are joining us on Zoom and to those of you who will be watching us on delayed broadcast at a later time. Please read with me the mission statement for the Marshalltown Community School District. We develop learners who have the knowledge, skills, and positive mindset to successfully pursue a meaningful future through personalized learning experiences. And would you join me in the pledge as soon as we see the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Are there any additions or corrections to the agenda? Yes, Nora. Yes, on the personnel consent agenda, um, there were several last minute, uh, one, two, three, four, five last minute resignations of certified staff that are highlighted in yellow. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay, sorry. Um, so those five resignations of certified staff were added. Also, um, one buildings and grounds um, addition as a hire for a utility carpenter and electrician highlighted yellow. And then finally, um, a change of contract for a teacher moving grade levels within the same building, same salary and everything, just a change of that grade level. So those are some additions to the consent agenda, the personnel one. Could you read those for us as long as it's not showing on the screen right now? Sure, so for the resignations that we have of staff, we have Mabel Kurian, Kurian who is a special ed teacher at Lenahan, uh, Lori Buckwald, who is an ELL teacher at Lenahan, Emily Valberg, who is a special education teacher at the high school, Steve Malone, who is a special education teacher at Miller, and then Anna Wolvers, who is a special education teacher at Rogers. Those are the five resignations, there we go those in yellow I just read. And then if you scroll down to page three, Buildings and Grounds, Chris Blanchard will be replacing Eldon Stanley. And then on page four, Sarah Nichols and Hoagland will be moving from um, first grade to the fourth grade. And that is as a result of a reduction of class size and a resignation from a fourth grade teacher. Thank you. Nora, did we have resolution language as well? That's its own, um, that's on the agenda. Yeah, but we need to add it. Okay, so um, also added to the agenda in um, section four called education 4.01, uh, COVID-19, we, uh, you folks passed a pandemic pandemic resolution. Um, and we have, if you scroll down, please, so I think it's page six, I think it's the final page, um, some edits to the language given um, the Iowa Department of Public Health prior, you had, if you were traveling for non-essential purposes, you had to self-quarantine or self-isolate for 14 days. And now um, it's been recommended by our legal team that we change that to not, you don't need to self-isolate, you do need to report your travel itinerary. 
itinerary, excuse me, and whether you have any basis to believe that you've been exposed to the COVID virus. Um, and then you may be required to use leave if you are restricted um, due to possible exposure. So just that language in that one paragraph speaking to that non-essential travel has changed or is, rec is a recommended change up for, for, up for approval. And that's only for non-essential travel? Correct, and that non-essential travel is considered if you travel 50 miles or more um, from the district, or if you congregate in a group of 10 or more, that those two things constitute what non-essential travel is. Okay. May I have a motion to approve the agenda as amended? So moved. Second. Remember to give your names first, but I think I have it. Miller Hernandez. Sorry. Oh, good. That's, that's fine. I just can't always see your picture. Um, Miller Hernandez. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same. And do we, are we still short two members? Amy? Yes, they're still not here. Okay, would you let me know when they do arrive? Yes. Thank you. So the motion carries 5-0. Um, it's now time to open the public hearing on the uh, proposed resolution to consider continued participation in the instructional support program. Paulette, did we receive any request to speak? I did not. Is there anyone in the audience at this time that would like to speak to that item? Then I will close the public hearing on the resolution to consider continued participation in the instructional support program. Mr. Sodders, you have a number of recognitions. Yes, we do again tonight, and I'm going to let Theron, uh, there's two of them on there that he will address, and then I will address uh, the other two. Well, I want to open up by um, providing thanks to Larry Raymond and Raymond Donko for recently, as of today, actually dropping off 750 cloth masks to be made available to our employees that will be involved in both um, collecting and bagging and getting ready for distribution students' personal belongings since we entered into break uh, back in early March and then um, when we disseminate the last week of June. So we're asking our employees that participate in that to, to be screened when they come, but then also either to bring their own mask or to use one of the masks that are provided. So that was a significant contribution uh, from Larry and his company uh, that we really appreciated and I know our staff will appreciate as well. I uh, want to also mention, uh, we don't have this listed, but we we're deeply saddened shortly after the last board meeting to hear of the passing of Rosemary Stansberry, who was employed as a paraeducator for us for many, many years. She had been battling um, some health related issues this year, but uh, we extend our thoughts and prayers to, to her family. Ben Stansberry and Laura were, um, Ben was a nephew. Um, so, and then also we're uh, additionally saddened to hear of a long time uh, employee, Dwayne Meyer, who started off his career many years ago as a teacher at Anson and then a relatively short period of time uh, came over to the dark side of administration. He, most of his 40 year career was spent as an elementary principal um, serving uh, Franklin, Glick and Rogers Elementary Schools. I know and having known him personally, he was one of the most positive supporters you could imagine of our school district. Um, loved his career, credited all the, the staff that he worked with uh, for, 
for his career. So again, our thoughts and prayers go out to both Rosemary and Dwayne's families during these difficult times. Also, um, happy to have uh, Maya, Diana, and Carmen with us who uh, we wanted to bring back one more time. They were our student school board representatives and uh, wanted to personally thank them for providing their service during this shortened COVID year and in, in hope that, um, that, that they receive mutual benefit through that service and learning and growing as uh, student leaders. And I think we've got them connected in with us so if they'd like to say a few words. Maya, we need to unmute you or you need to unmute. There you go. Um, I just wanted to say that I've learned a lot from this experience and I'm grateful for the opportunity. Do we have Diana or Carmen on? Yeah, um, I wanted to say that it was really fun to learn how the school handles things and um, how, how much they actually care about the student. And I thought that was really cool to know and experience firsthand. Carmen available. Yeah, I'm just on the road, but I wanted to say that I learned a lot about how the school works, a lot of patients and overall, it was a really neat experience getting to see everyone week after week. Well, not week after week, but every meeting after meeting. So that was my take on it. Sometimes it seemed like week after week, didn't it? Yeah. It really did. <laughs> well, we really want to thank the three of you. You were great role models and serving in those roles. I know that uh, the board and administrative team looked forward to and enjoyed hearing your updates on what all was happening, uh, both with you as well as in the high school in general. We, we do have a small token of appreciation for you that we will uh, do our best to uh, get to you uh, prior to the end of the year here. And uh, if uh, you know of any good candidates in either the junior or senior class that should be considering uh, following in your footsteps, please reach out and encourage them to apply. But they have to be as good as you guys were. You were just great for us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and then. And sorry, really quick, Adam. I just wanted to tell B that Bob is now on with us. Thank you. Yep. And uh, for the rest of uh, our recognitions tonight, I wanted to give you guys an update on the uh, National History Day students. They came before the board a couple of meetings ago, I believe. Uh, at that time, they had qualified for state. Uh, just a quick update on them. They uh, had a very strong showing at state. Two of them, Avery Bolar and Jason Strand, qualified for the National National History Day oh uh, contests. So that'll be really neat to see how they end up doing at that level. And then Claudia Hernandez also did an excellent job at state, and she earned a third place award there as well. So and then uh, just another recognition, um, National School Nurses Day was May 6th. It was a little after the last board meeting. Um, and we just wanted to, obviously school nurses are just one of many, many groups within our uh, school community that uh, have been working their tails off here recently. I know our, our school nurses have been making sure that uh, folks are screened uh, as they come into the district, folks who are working uh, at the buildings and on the grounds uh, and uh, they help out with face masks and other materials and they just generally do a great job for us so we just wanted to recognize them and I think that is it for tonight for recognitions.
Thank you very much. We'll move on to the consent agenda. Looking at the minutes for the last board meeting, are there any additions or corrections to those? Any items of note in personnel other than the ones you mentioned, Nora? No, ma'am. Looking at interagency agreements and contracts, we have quite a few. We have a memorandum for understanding with Luther College for student clinical field experiences, including student teaching. We have a client agreement with Vector Solutions for K-12 education software for the exceptional child in the amount of $1,875, um, which will be used by special education teachers. A memorandum memorandum of understanding with IJAG for the high school and one for um, Miller Middle School. We have an agreement with school administrators for their mentoring and induction program of new administrators. We have an amendment to the master service agreement with the high school. A uh, proposal for the Waldinger Corporation um, for work at Miller Middle School in pipe insulation. A memorandum of agreement with MEA for, a cre for the career tree facilitators for the 2021 school year and also for the remainder of this school year, May 15th to June 30th. We have one level three student out to Des Moines. Are there any questions on any of those? Looking at open enrollments, uh, it looks like we have one denial for the 2021 school year, um, which came in past deadline. Are there any items of note in bills? No. Uh, any questions by the board and the financial report? Looking at the disposition of obsolete equipment um, for 150 uh, high school band uniforms, they are in acceptable quality and will be sold online. Are there any questions on any of the items in the consent agenda? May I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Baltus. I didn't get it. Sean, you did what? Uh, I think Sarah had the motion. I will second. Okay, Baltus Heitman. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The motion carries 6 to 0. No one comment um, wrote in requesting public comment, Paulette? No, I received no written comments. OK. Moving on. To for us we need to do the COVID resolution first okay backing up just a hair um I, I was gonna say I already touched on the the change if anybody had any questions I guess okay are there any questions for Dr. Ryan May I have a motion to approve the resolution as presented? Miller, move for approval. Heitman, second. Miller Heitman, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The motion carries 6 0. Now, Dr. Stevenson. Summer school update. It's hard to believe we're thinking about summer school, but um, actually, 
we're kind of excited. We're taking a twist on our Bobcat U this summer and um, wanted to give you an update um, because much of the expenses that will be incurred this summer for summer school were already pre-approved from the board back um, in January when we approved the district at-risk budget. So I kind of wanted to give you an update on what's happening in terms of summer school. I suppose if there was ever a summer when I felt like kids needed summer school, this would be one of those, one of the um, most highly thought of because of this interruption of learning we've had. But we um, will not be partnering with MICA. We will not be outsourcing the contract um, to do contracted work for summer school mostly because um, we have to offer summer school in a virtual format this summer um, due to the pandemic. So, so much of the work that MICA supported um, in terms of the enrichment opportunities, the field trips, the extended learning um, just are not able to happen in the community this summer. So for that reason, we'll be doing virtual summer school. And I'm just gonna go through a few pieces of what that will look like. So. At this point, um, MICA will still be offering a pre-K and K transition camp. Um, kinder camp is what it's usually called at Rogers Woodbury and Anson. Um, and that will be in late July or early August. Um, and that's assuming that we can do that in person. Um, so more details on that will be forthcoming as um, the health situation progresses. Um, most of you are aware that we are learning in Marshalltown has been happening from a website called Learn From Home. And I'm happy to say that the Learn From Home website will continue to run during the summer. It'll be open from June 15th to July 31st. So during those seven weeks, um, teachers will be working under the direction of um, Erica Finders, Tanya Gaffney and Jen O'Neill, who are current um, TLC employees who will be working with um, a teacher from each grade level. And um, we'll be reaching out to teachers in the Google form this week um, to see who's still interested in helping now that um, working conditions have changed for the summer. So students in pre-K three will still get weekly math and reading lessons um, as well as science and social studies at Lenahan. Um, we will still continue to run uh, paper packet copies of those lessons on Fridays with distribution on Mondays and Tuesdays either via bus routes and or at the schools, depending on um, our bus meal route delivery for the summer. And communication about the Learn From Home website continuation will be broadly shared out with families, um, either through their report card envelopes, the week of June 1st to the 5th, um, as well as Adam's been helping send out an infinite campus message every Sunday. And we continue to use social media to encourage families um, to have their children spend time learning from home. Um, the Bobcat University that you are familiar with um, at K3 happens at each of our six sites. And what we're doing this summer is offering one hour of synchronous instruction through the Google Meet format by grade level um, at each site. So there are targeted at-risk students that were identified in January with our reading and math um, screeners they were invited at parent-teacher conferences in March to um, attend summer school and that, that invitation still stands. It just looks a little bit different. So um, the teachers who are hired for this synchronous teaching um, will have an hour of instruction around reading and math, as well as um, some time built into their schedule to do outreach with those families um, to ensure that kids really are logging in and, and continuing their learning throughout the summer. Um, each building, each of the six buildings will have a lead teacher that will be identified to help support the coordination of that work. Um, and then a special education teacher also who can support students who have IEPs um, who may have been invited to Bobcat U. Um, our communication methods will be the same um, as the Learn From Home website. And then continuing on up the grade levels in the district, we will still offer um, a Bobcat U at Lenahan, that's for incoming fifth graders and incoming sixth graders. Those students were identified in a similar fashion in January and invited. Um, that program will also run for seven weeks. And then this will be our first summer that we wanted to launch Bobcat U at Miller. Um, and so we're trying to get a program up and running for incoming seventh graders and eighth graders. 
um, who also have been invited at conferences um, who will get support in reading math, science, and social studies this summer through a synchronous instruction, hour of instruction daily. We're really hopeful that our middle schoolers are willing to, to get up, log in, and, and learn with their teachers for an hour. Um, and then similarly, we'll still run our credit recovery program at MHS in June. Um, Mrs. Lyant um, directs that program and will help kids who need to recover credits and or still work to graduate. Um, that runs from June 9th to June 25th. Um, MLA teachers also help under Mr. Goslinga's instruction um, to provide a similar format for MLA students who are hoping to recover credits or graduate. And lastly, um, the last program that we're launching with summer school at risk funding is a ninth grade transition program. They're working with Mr. Ryle and the other administrators at MHS to get um, a virtual elective credit that can be given to students um, if they take this high school 101 class that's being developed. So that class actually runs um, July 13th to July 31st and more information will be coming out um, to those students um, via the high school in a couple weeks. So we've been busy behind the scenes getting us ready to move on to the next um, phase of learning for our students and super helpful. Um, we've had so much help from the tech department in terms of being flexible about the kids keeping their devices in the summer and um, really pinpointing which students need Wi-Fi hotspot access um, so that this virtual learning can happen. It's not what we planned or what we wanted, but uh, I feel good about um, the opportunities that are going to keep going for our students. Questions for Lisa? Yeah. So how many kids are being invited per building for elementary building? Um, it'll still be the same number of kids that were originally on um, the invites at parent-teacher conferences. So I think that is up to 15 students at K-3 per teacher per building. That's for the synchronous learning part. And then any kid in the district can learn from the Learn From Home website. And then how are you assuring that every child has internet to have that one hour of instruction with the teacher? Are they going to um, be hotspots or? Yeah. So what we did was we went back through that survey that um, Amy Harmson's been talking to you guys about. And then I shared the rosters um, of the kids who had been invited in March. And then she and her team cross-checked those names to see who had indicated they didn't have Wi-Fi access. And then they're doing a distribution of devices um, to those families. Perfect, thank you. Yep. And we are, fingers crossed, Karina, someday we'll be back to normal and taking kids swimming and horseback riding because, um, I, you know, it is summer. We want to learn and learn inside and learn outside. Do you have a plan as far as um, maybe adding something on the website for those virtual enrichment activities that are being offered, I don't know, statewide, nationwide? just for anybody to just jump in? Um, not at this time, but that's a good suggestion. We could probably put like a separate link to like virtual summer field trips or vacations or something. Yeah, I've seen a lot of the parks and libraries have been sharing resources. Other questions for Lisa? Thank you very much. Jackie. Good evening. <clears throat> Hello. Um, <laughs> tonight I'd like to talk about our plan for the class of 2020's graduation um, ceremony. Uh, as much as we would like to have it be the traditional um, pack the roundhouse event with all of our families and friends, we do want to remain in compliance with the CDC recommendations, uh, with Department of Public Health recommendations, as well as the governor's orders. And so at this time, the plan is, um, the recommendation is that their social distancing is enacted and that groups remain um, at 10 or less. So with that, keeping that in mind and recognizing that the roundhouse with its iconic nature is an important feature and a memory for many of the graduates from MHS, we have looked at a way to um, 
celebrate each graduate with their family present in the roundhouse. So if you can imagine from a 1000 foot view looking down at the roundhouse and in your mind's eye, see a car or cars arriving at a designated time into the auditorium parking lot with, with a couple of people in the parking lot with them, but nobody's getting out of their car because they've been told to wait until they've been dismissed from their car. So now the group, first group dismisses from their car and proceeds to a table, sta station number two, where they check in and receive a envelope that has their graduation regalia, things like honor cord, silver cord, MVP medal, their five gallon blood donation um, cord, things like that, um, NHS um, stole so that they can begin to put that on as they begin as a family group to process onto, we've decided to use uh, Bobcat paws rather than X's as a group moving to different stations. There would probably be staff seated in the now closed Bobcat Boulevard, uh, applauding them, congratulating them and reminding them to stay with as a group in the designated areas. Once the group arrives to the gym, the student will hand a name card to Lydia Arevalo, the 12th grade counselor at the podium at the entrance of the gym. And she will announce the student. The family then will proceed to a designated area right up against the East Bleachers. And so they would stay there as the student processes up to the stage, which is at the center court of the roundhouse. And sitting on the table, because we've had radios, will be the student's diploma cover with a diploma in, in it. That is unusual, because normally it's not in there, but the diploma will be in the cover and the student will receive it off of the table. Um, staff will have already placed it there. Um, the picture of the student receiving the, the diploma will be taken by Stalzers, as, as has been traditionally done. The student then will proceed away from the stage as the next family comes in and Lydia announces the next name um, and go to this photo photograph station where they will have their picture taken in front of the American flag, another tradition. And by then the family will have met the student and they will proceed to the exit and be asked to immediately leave as we will not have any loitering in the parking lot. Uh, one of the things I did fail to mention is as the student is going <clears throat> towards the stage, um, KFJB would read the senior accomplishments um, like we would normally do on a senior um, award night during our uh, athletic seasons. Um, so just a, a way to celebrate the accomplishment of the student. Lots of staff want to be present and be able to applaud and clap for the student reaching this milestone. And um, we're pretty confident that we can move this along as long as everybody <laughs> arrives in their designated time frame into the parking lot and um, follow the directions carefully as the staff guides them along the way. Questions for Jackie? Jackie, is part of the plan also to do part of the ceremony virtually? Yes, Theron, thank you for reminding of me of that. Um, our, our procession of graduates will start at two, but we will have um, a pre-program, the pre-videotaped program um, that features the, the graduation speech from our board, speech from our board president, graduation speech from Dr. Schutte, myself, the students who uh, can um, audition so we have students audition to be speakers during the graduation ceremony. A few students choose to perform during the graduation ceremony. So all of those things will be videotaped and presented approximately one o'clock before um, the ceremony starts. And that will be, would be broadcasted across multiple media for um, graduates to watch and or listen to as they make their way to um, the auditorium parking lot for their assigned times. Um, and that today we were trying to figure out how we get the anthem singers, a performance of the anthem singers, which has also been traditional as well as the music director, band director is currently uh, working on a way to provide the pomp and circumstance. So pomp and circumstance would be right at the end. Um, well, first the national anthem and then Palm and Circumstance, and that would transition us into 
the students processing into the auditorium. I may have missed it, but you're not looking at requiring masks at this point, huh? The only, yeah, we're, we are not because it's just the student and the family pretty much in the gym. The rest, any other staff members here in the gym will be back away from the table in, in um, gown and uh, hood like staff or, or like teachers or administrators. Um, and the one because uh, counselor at the podium, otherwise everybody's outside. There, there's really nobody else but the student and the family inside the, auto, inside the gymnasium. And we'll, we'll continue to evaluate uh -huh. those things as we get closer to June 28th, which uh -huh. is the designated Sunday. Um, we've also talked about uh, school board member involvement. Obviously, this process is going to probably take um, longer than a traditional graduation um, in terms of the logistics. So we will likely offer to the board members that would like to participate, um, you know, like staggered times or maybe, you know, if it's a four or five hour affair that, you know, if we can have at least one board member there for at least an hour. Mm -hmm. um, and um, there may be some that are willing to, to do longer than that. Um, but it would be nice to have at least a board member there as the students are coming through. We've talked about uh, creating cardboard uh, replicas of you guys. So we can <laughs> all there and, and thought. <laughs> We're still working on that one. <laughs> the same, the same has been offered to the staff that maybe they can't stay for the whole entire time, but they could um, come for an hour or two and then swap out and the the pieces that they all recognize is the um, helping everyone to be socially conscious by maintaining their distance from the group on either side of them as they proceed towards the gymnasium. And the backup plan for rain is that we do have the new auxiliary gym. So we would enter through one door and provide the paw prints or X's or boxes or whatever that keep families separated and bring students around on the track um, to do the same procession. One of the things that I'm really excited about with this idea is that it can really be a family event and that not just the family sitting in the stands, but uh, despite you know, not having a normal graduation ceremony. Families, um, I think we're, we'll have a maximum number, whether that be 10 or six or whatever, can actually come in with their graduate uh, up to the stage area and, you know, be directly a part of that portion of the experience. So that's the plan as of today. Correct. Right. <laughs> Thank you very much for making the plans and sharing them with us. Jackie, do you want to just do a promo about the senior awards uh, ceremony as well? Absolutely. We have um, begun to record different aspects of the senior awards. As if you've been at one of those ceremonies, the um, community members who speak on behalf of the legacy that the uh, scholarship is provided in name of frequently come to the stage and read the background information about um, the legacy and then presents form formally to the student who receives. So many times they do not know that they're receiving the scholarship. <clears throat> so just last week, I participated in a, a meeting like this with a um, presenter and we recorded uh, his presentation where he announced the name of the recipient. And so um, he was able to review his video and say whether or not he liked it and wanted to do another take. We did do a couple of takes while we were together. It took us less than 15 minutes to, to do that. So then we have a staff member who will piece all of those parts together and, and um, have a, an entire show that will be aired on June 3rd at 7 p.m. Um, we will send that link out to all of our constituents for Marshtown Community School District as well as get um, it work with Adam to get it published in the paper and things like that. Um, one of the things that's unique about this senior class is they're all gear up recipients. So technically every single one of them is receiving a scholarship of about approximately $1,200 a year. 
And so um, it's pretty exciting. So it'll be a little longer broadcast than we've had in the past. Um, normally it's been about two hours. Um, but again, we wanna take the time to recognize their academic um, achievements as well in that Wednesday night um, broadcast. Indeed. Thank you very much. You're welcome. We'll look forward to that. Thank you. Rex. We had some questions for you as a board at the last time that you presented to us. Uh, do you have some answers for us? Okay, can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay. Um, we put together uh, to try and answer the questions about why do we need the software? What are we looking at? And so uh, I wanna go through the PowerPoint with you to give you a little bit better insight and hopefully answer some of your uh, questions. Uh, the uh, next, first slide is the communication and operational efficiency. What are we trying to do? We're, we're asking to go from uh, our pro software to plus and to work our key things on the communication in operation are our two key focuses here. And in that, when we look at that, what are we wanting uh, to do? If, uh, Amy, go ahead to the next slide, please. Uh, really build this uh, level of confidence uh, in that people know what is going on and, and be able to get things out in real time. Uh, last year, we had a uh, accident where a bus, a car came, hit the bus from behind on icy roads and we couldn't get information out quick enough. And by the time it got out, uh, people were injured and this and that. And we had a lot of uh, correction to do on that because students can get things out quicker than we can sometimes. And then parents share that out. And with the new software, whether the parent opts in or doesn't opt in, we can put out to the specific bus or to anybody that rides uh, uh, in our uh, has uh, bus information, whether they walk to school or whatever, we'll be able to push information out. And that's really one of the, those uh, big things that we want to be able to get information out fairly uh, quicker than what we have in the past. Because in the past pre, uh, process has been getting the information to Andrew and now to Adam, and then they get the information out. And that just uh, really complicates some things. And by working with Adam, everything, we can prepare it correctly after the administration has been notified and get information sent out quickly to parents. If a bus is running behind schedule, uh, bus and for some reason we're ahead of schedule, uh, all those information, getting that out. Also, uh, getting information here to the office if a mechanical issue, we're going to be able to see that and be able to work with that uh, in our mechanics and getting that bus, either getting a new bus out there or getting that corrected. So that's the big thing is, is, is that communication piece. Uh, next slide, please, Amy. Uh, by upgrading uh, to Transfer Plus, better, better communication equals better student safety. We don't have parents trying to get someplace or with misinformation and uh, kids giving it misinformation, parent, you know, that whole combination there, we just feel very strongly uh, with uh, the pro, uh, the plus software, we're gonna be able to communicate that out and make and reassure everybody that the student is safe. Uh, we can be able to push it out quicker again, like I said, they don't have to opt in. We can push things out to them uh, if we have their information correct in the student information system. Uh, we can push things out and have a, accurate information versus what you see sometimes on uh, social media or whatever. We can provide the, that accurate information going out. Uh, again, parents can opt in, uh, but that doesn't stop them from getting information to us if they don't opt in. The opt-in part is, well, they'll get the uh, time of bus arrival and uh, everything like that. They'll still get, we can push out to them when their bus uh, will be there. But if they want the ETA type of thing, then they can opt in for that. And the beautiful thing too, is the two-way communication. Uh, what we send out, they can also send messages to us through the same thing. And it doesn't have to go through like a email or anything. It, it's a direct communication back and forth 
uh, with the uh, PUS software. Uh, go ahead to the next slide, Amy, please. Uh, operational efficiency, again, currently we have uh, no mains to really monitor what's going on with the bus, where that bus is at. We have to call and find their location. Uh, through this process, at any time, whether they're in, uh, in our district, out of our district on a field trip, we are gonna be able to know where that bus is and, uh, and its location at all times. Uh, if something's going wrong with that bus, and this is the nice part, there's down Des Moines, Iowa, something is not right on the bus, we can get a diagnostic alert back here and be able to figure out what we want to do. If we have to call mutual aid with another district, send a bus down, whatever, plus the fact if we have no, uh, the advisor knows who kids are on that bus, we can get word to those parents. So that's going to be a really nice part there. And just the here in our own district, just uh, staying on top of what's going on. And just the management of route times, uh, being able to know where those buses are at and be able to move our buses around more efficiently and uh, work with that a little bit better to, if they look like we're doubling up someplace, uh, cleaning that up and uh, clearing that up. Go ahead, Amy, to the next slide, please. Uh, by upgrading, uh, we get the G, uh, GPS that we don't have uh, and we need that to monitor our fleet. Uh, we'll be able to uh, monitor our driver's behavior and what's going on when we get a call, a bus is speeding or whatever. It is something that we can go to and get some uh, more direct information. Because uh, right now, it, when we get those calls, you know, uh, we're doing the best we can. We still have those uh, conversations, uh, but this will add to those conversations that we are having here. Uh, uh, unlimited user access. Uh, if a secretary in a building wants to see where a bus is at, they will have access to that to see where that bus is at, if it's running late, whatever. Uh, and if they have kids out on a field trip, being able, the administrator or the uh, administrative assistant being able to look, see where, what is happening with the, the time arrival and everything. So I think that's gonna help a whole lot in the communication of making us a stronger district all the way around. Uh, helping those principals, helping those uh, building secretaries. Uh, and if a parent calls into a building, uh, my bus didn't come, they're gonna be able to answer it. They don't have to transfer that or redirect them someplace else. They're gonna be able to look right there, know the bus was there or it's coming. Uh, they'll be able to see some of that. The other nice thing about the upgrade is that if we're talking about how can we absorb a route uh, because we can't fill it or whatever the case may be, we can see the impact that would be on the other routes that we would want to put it in and also the timing and also uh, being able to get that communication out to the parents. Uh, this last year, we were going to do that. And when we talked to the parents, found out that it wouldn't work for their time schedule and everything. So we were able to, this will help us and we can do a better job in a lot quicker time than what it has been. The other thing is the bus idling, just uh, we did the, uh, monitored this a year ago on a pilot project of wanting to see how much our buses were just sitting around idling. And we just passed a board policy on this. This will help us uh, kind of enforce that. And we'll have things that we can really show drivers about what's going on and help them become better stewards and working with their bus. Uh, again, anything on the bus, we get the diagnostic alerts that can off stay. Uh, some downtime because we can get that sooner. And as I mentioned before, uh, we get alerts when that bus goes over a posted speed limit, we would get alert uh, here in the office and show us where, they, where it happened at. And it gives opportunity to have a conversation uh, with the uh, driver. Uh, go ahead, Amy, to the next. Uh, a, a year ago in the, at this time, we had the opportunity uh, to uh, do a pilot for Zonar just to see how the software worked. And that's one of the things that we're asking you. Uh, and I forgot to mention this earlier. Uh, in that, we would get a daily report of the engine diagnostics of the buses, we, the bus or bus that we would be monitoring. Uh, we would get the location, the speed, the engine speed, the idling. So it was really useful uh, with a couple of our drivers that we had concerns about, we put it on their bus and then we could have conversation with them. So it was a really nice tool for us to really uh, work with that driver and 
kind of improve their driving habits and uh, stay on top of what they were doing. The next slide, Amy, please. Uh, upgrading to transfer allows us uh, parents access, uh, which we don't have in that 24 seven communication between them and transportation. Uh, right now, we transport right around uh, 1400 students twice each day, uh, roughly 95 runs per day, 30 activity trips. So knowing where these buses are, what's going on with them, if we have a bus out on a daytime activity trip and we see they're running late, we can get a substitute bus in there uh, without a delay or without hesitation, which will help us out uh, quite a bit. Uh, you know, as our uh, needs evolve, uh, the work down here evolves. Uh, you know, uh, we have the PK uh, noon, uh, morning noon routes uh, separate from the regular routes. We have the TK uh, routes that we are doing. Then we have our afternoon uh, programs, the migrant, the intramurals, the 21st century. All that we need to coordinate and be able to track better. And uh, with uh, more people, uh, it helps us a lot. We want to advance the learning. We want to support the learning of the students and uh, make everything accessible as possible. Uh, and this software will help us do even a better job. Uh, we've really expanded a lot and stepped in when we needed and where we needed when asked. And uh, we just need that help down here. Uh, as stated before, currently we're running uh, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And uh, I'm ending up picking up a lot of that slack and I can't get some of the other things I'd like to get done. Uh, you know, having that extra personnel down here to help uh, work this and cover this is uh, needed. We looked at other districts our size and we are uh, understaffed for what we need and what we're asking of this office to do. So hopefully you will consider allowing us to add another person down here to help take care of all of the different uh, activities we got going on and stay on top of those uh, the best we can. And overall, next slide, please, Amy. Uh, overall, again, going back through uh, the Transfinder Plus software is uh, 23,000. The Zonar part with the GPS, which we need for a lot of things we want to do to move forward is 26,097. The total is 4,997. That comes out of sales tax. The hardware, uh, we're going to just need um, some minor hardware to move us forward. That would come out of general fund. The annual software co uh, cost, the 26,150, would be a general fund expense. And an additional person, this is uh, as to, uh, high, probably a little bit less than this, but would come out of the general fund for about 35,360 for that uh, additional person here. That is what I have for your PowerPoint uh, questions. Questions for Rex? Any points of clarification? I appreciate the work you spent uh, doing this. I appreciate it a lot. Uh, thank you. I appreciate your question last time. It helped us dig a little bit deeper to make sure we were being clear about what our expectations were and what we wanted to do. So we're looking at about 50,000 coming from sales tax and about 60,000, coming from general fund. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. Has this already been budgeted, Paulette? The existing costs are in the current year budget. For next year's line item budget, yes, we will build this in. Other questions? May I have a motion to approve the upgrading to TransFinder Plus and increasing the administrative assistant dispatcher position to two full-time equivalencies. Karina, move for approval. Unteed, second. Hernandez, unteed. Thank you both. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The motion carries 6 0. Thank you. Greatly appreciate it. Dr. Schutte, audio systems. Yes, as the uh, tenured board members are aware, over the course of the last two to three years, we've been implementing audio systems in all of the regular elementary classrooms in order to best ensure equity of students being able to hear the teacher's voice, which there's a lot of research behind the importance of that. It's uh, extremely beneficial for all students, but uh, particularly for students that may have diagnosed or undiagnosed hearing disorders, obviously our ELL population, special education. And the other benefit that we find is it's significantly helpful for preserving and protecting teacher voices as well. Uh, the last couple years, we had started off by uh, implementing in one or two buildings a year so Woodbury, Rogers, and Anson uh, have these systems in place. We're looking to implement over the course of the summer in Hoagland. And then over the course of the next one to two years, we'll be looking to implement into um, Franklin and Fisher as well. So simply seeking your approval to continue that implementation this summer. Questions for Dr. Schutte? And this will be funded through sales tax? Correct. If there are no questions, may I have a motion to approve the class classroom audio systems purchase in the amount of $24,990? Heitman, so moved. Second, Faltus. Heitman, Faltus, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The motion carries 6 0. Thank you. Paulette? Okay, the next item on the agenda is um, to renew our um, instructional support uh, program resolution. We are currently um, in a five-year resolution for this program and it expires on June 30th of 2021. So what we would be doing tonight in asking for your support to um, renew this instructional support program for another five years um, commencing with July 1st, 2021. And what this program does for the district is it allows us to expand our general fund budget um, regular instructional program by about 10%. So it currently provides over about $2 million um, to the district each year, which um, this program can be used to support pretty much any general fund um, allowable expense. Um, there are a couple of different ways to fund this program. You can fund it through property taxes, 100% property taxes, or a combination of property tax and income surtax. Um, we are not deciding that tonight. We are simply renewing the resolution um, to extend for a five-year period. Questions for Paula? May I have a motion to um, approve the adoption of the resolution to continue participation in the instructional support program for a period of five years, beginning with the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2022. Pardon me for being out of order. So moved. <laughs> Miller, sir. Unteat Miller, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same? No. 
The motion carries 6-0. Thank you. Dr. Schutte. Yes, um, <clears throat> we bring before you a recommendation for increases and chain changes to administrative salary and benefits uh, for 2020-2021. We're requesting the board's consideration of a 2.46 increase, which would be consistent with what was approved for uh, the teachers or the MEA. Uh, additionally, we're asking that a uh, work day be repurposed into a pay holiday on Martha, Martin Luther King Day and that that provision also be extended to other 12 month employees, including secretaries, B&G custodial. We'd like to ask that one, uh, the prior one paid personal day be adjusted to two, similar to what we've approved for our teachers during the course of this year. And um, also that we add in-laws to the list of allowed bereavement. I think that was just simply an oversight when it was added and approved for the other contracted areas. I think we just neglected to update um, that for the administrative group. Uh, we also have on there uh, uh, providing me with the opportunity to allow administrators to work from home on days where we have school cancellations due to weather, obviously we're in a much better place to assure that that can happen effectively after experiencing the work from home uh, at COVID. Uh, we've also talked to them about, uh, the administrators about providing their secretaries with the necessary resources so they would be in a position to do the same. Questions for Dr. Schutte. May I have a motion to approve the administrator proposed salary and benefit changes as presented? So moved, Faltus. Second, unteed. Faltus, unteed. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The motion carries 6 0. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Ryan, secretarial. All right, um, two pieces uh, for recommended action, although the first is redundant now that that was passed, but um, the addition of MLK Junior Day, obviously, um, which is uh, which the admin pr uh, proposals um, spoke to that. So I don't think we need any action there. Um, but, but the second is the implementation of a new salary schedule for this group of employees. And so this, as you can see on the screen, is a step schedule similar to the other employee groups. And for this employee group, they did not have a regimented kind of steps that were very clear pathway to that maximum wage. And so this is a step, a salary schedule that would allow for that. Um, and in order to implement this and with a few um, changes that need to be made to existing secretary or administrative assistance roles in order to fit into this. The total cost is about $56,000, but I think um, having a, a clear and regimented step schedule will be beneficial for this group. Questions for Nora? May I have a motion to approve the administrative assistance proposed salary and benefits changes as presented? Miller, so moved. Unteed, second. Miller, unteed. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The motion carries 6 0. Thank you. Thank you. We're already to policies, and there are so few for tonight, Dr. Schutte. Thank you for the commendation. Um, for the first readings, we have three policies, which you saw in review last week, the new 200.1 organization of the board, 506.2 R1, 
which was a new regulation use of directory information in 506.2 E1, authorization for releasing student directory information. There have been no further adjustments or changes uh, from that initial review. So we'd ask that you amend and or adopt as appropriate. Questions for Dr. Schutte. May I have a motion to amend 201.7, now 200.1, and 506.2 E1? Heitman, so moved. Second, Karina. Heitman Hernandez, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The motion carries 6 0. Now, may I have a motion to adopt 506.2 R1? Heitman, so moved. Second, Faltus. Heitman Faltus, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The motion carries 6 0. For initial review, there is one policy 312.3 R or E1, fringe benefits administrators, supervisors. The adjustments on this policy reflect the previous decision the board made in improving the administrative uh, language and salary changes. This would come back for a first reading. Questions for Dr. Schutte at this time? All righty. Looky how fast we got through those, Mike. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Adam, any well, items of note and communications? Well, first, I just want to say that might be the record shortest set of uh, uh, policies that I've seen in all the years coming to board meetings. So that's that's only because we got Dr. Schutte to hold up just a bit. <laughs> well, um, so for an update, like uh, like you heard earlier from Dr. Stevenson, I am going to continue to uh, make sure that whatever changes come down the road as far as um, online learning, uh, the Learn From Home website, uh, any paper materials we hand out, just continuing to ensure that those updated messages are shared out promptly with uh, parents and families and doing so in a way that reflects uh, the linguistic diversity at our district. Uh, and then the other thing I wanted to briefly mention was I am working on, uh, in conjunction with uh, um, uh, folks from the AEA, uh, new kind of um, design for the high school ready standards or um, indicators that you all passed, I think in February. So um, we're preparing to have those sent to Miller Middle School here this summer, um, just kind of posters and other things showing students and staff those goals that we have uh, made and uh, implementing that. It'll be uh, obviously um, kind of a continuation of the Bobcat Ready standards that already exist, so. Questions for Adam? Thank you for the update, Adam. Looking at reminders, the Auditorium Foundation meets virtually tomorrow um, on Tuesday, May 19th. Our next regular board meeting is June 1st. Um, moving on to committee reports, we had a labor management committee meeting. Nora, could you give us a quick summary? Sure. We discussed two uh, main topics during that meeting. The first was the pair of... We can't hear you anymore. Still no. I'm sure it's a nice update, Nora, but we can't hear you. And she probably can't hear us. <laughs> Can anybody read lips?
No. <laughs> Hello? Yes. Hey. <laughs> I got the whole thing. Okay, here we go. Really quickly. Um, two topics were discussed. Paula, I can see you. So if you all of a sudden can't hear me, can you just like do this? <laughs> okay. First topic we discussed was um, they the paraeducators came to the table basically asking for um, the paid time off to all be into in one bank. And um, through a discussion, it really came out that the main ask was for more family sick time. And that was kind of really at the core, what they were asking for was more family sick time. So that was something that we discussed. Um, and so obviously we'll have a, you know, we will ponder that and consider that um, now that leaves are in the handbook that is not in the contracts anymore. So that was their ask. And then the second thing that we discussed was, um, I just had posed the question, I guess I was trying to understand the history of why we had um, four different bargaining units for the support groups and why they weren't in one collective unit. And so really it was just a conversation about the history there. And it just came out really that in the seventies B and G organized and also food service um, and, you know, just the, there wasn't really an answer. It was just kind of the timeline of what happened. And so we had just had a very brief conversation about um, the idea, not proposing it or suggesting it, but the idea of the support groups becoming one collective unit, obviously with different needs and different um, benefits in a sense, as far as time off, since some of them are 12 month employees. Um, but that was a short conversation that we had. And that was pretty much it for the um, Labor Management Committee meeting. Thank you. We heard all of that. Yay. <laughs> okay, moving on. What have we done this evening to make education better for the students in Marshalltown Community School District? B, I thought it was a really nice report by Lisa by all of the stuff that we're doing in summer school. Uh, even with all the challenges, I thought that their uh, agenda for summer school is is uh, really good big one so uh, good job there thank you and i think that the the classroom audio system continuing to do that having sat in a classroom and i don't remember where it was one of the buildings that has that uh the difference in being able to hear the teacher and, and understand what's going on is is significant so i think that's a good thing thank you i'm quite excited about our um support for the instructional support program. Thank you. It certainly does bring a big chunk of change into the district. And thank you to Jackie for coordinating a graduation for our, our seniors. Being a senior mom, I appreciate that. <laughs> Indeed, in these strange times. Well, my quote comes from Martin Luther King Jr. And it's about those strange, tough times that we're talking about. He says, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. With that, I would encourage everyone to dewater and water, take a break. It's now 6.15. Um, let's meet back on the Google site for our closed session at 6.25. Is that workable for everybody? Yep. We'll see you there. 625 on the Google site.